everybody. Welcome back. Great to be here on a brand new week of the Cabral Concept. Can't wait to get into today's topic, which dates way back to when I had the opportunity multiple times to travel to Sri Lanka and India and study in Ayurvedic-based clinics. And while I was there, I couldn't help but be exposed to some of the amazing Vedic-based philosophy and wisdom, as well as Hindu-based philosophies, one of which shared the ultimate purpose of we human beings. And I've studied this. I've looked into it over the years. I've really had some time to absorb it. And what they talk about, well, you probably heard the word Dharma before, but I want to go a little bit deeper than that because this is referred to as the four Purushatas. And although I'm sure I'm not doing it just in, just in terms of pronunciation, what Purush breaks down to, so it's Purush, which means man, man or woman, and Artha, which means purpose or end. So it literally translates to man's end or man's purpose purpose. And why I share with this share this with you is because, you know, this is 6000 plus year old wisdom. So when we talk about this, we talk about Ayurvedic medicine and why it really is so amazing is that it stood the test of time. And even today when we look at research, it continues to break down, delineate and explore much of which Ayurvedic texts have talked about, but it just does it in a different way. It does it in a more, let's just say, modern scientific way, but it doesn't actually, not only does it not denigrate Ayurvedic-based work, it builds it up. It actually makes it probably more worth studying now than ever before. So I'll always go back to my Ayurvedic texts. Obviously, it brings me back to working with my mentor and studying my mentor and, and her mentor, which was Dr. Vasant Lad. So let's dive into it here today, because really what we're talking about is the four main goals of life, the ultimate purpose. So we'll end with the ultimate purpose, but the three that come before that are in almost any order that you're initiated into. So I put them in order that I believe in my opinion, makes the most sense, or at least it works and is working well in my life. So let me just share with you first. There are four different levels. The first one is Artha. So Artha is literally economics, prosperity, wealth. Now, it's not the love of these things. Like The philosophy is actually a really beautiful philosophy. Because it actually, like right away when people hear wealth and prosperity, they're like, oh, you know, like that's bad, right? Because a lot of people have been taught like, oh, the, the love of money or accumulation of money is evil, right? But when we know the direct translation, it's the love of money is evil, of course. Money itself isn't, but the, the love of that. So what this Hindu philosophies, the four Purushas or Purusartas talk about is actually we need some level of prosperity. So we, we shouldn't shy away from that. But we need to do it in an ethical and everything about these, these four agreements. I keep going back to the four agreements. But the reason why we go back to that is always done in an ethical way. So by accumulating some level of wealth and prosperity, it allows you then to move to level two. It's a, what I'm going to share with you, and you'll understand this by the end. It's difficult to move to the end purpose of life. It really is difficult for 99 plus percent of people if you don't acquire some prosperity. Now, for many people, that might be earning fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. Like it's a, we're not talking about a million dollars a year, but as we talked about in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, basic needs need to be met. Shelter, food, right? Like if you don't have food for your family or shelter for yourself and your family, really difficult to move through these four levels. The second level is karma. So we've heard about karma maybe before, but we usually think about it in a way of like, put good out, good comes back. Put bad out into the world, bad comes back. I try to teach that to my daughters as much as I can. Meaning like, yeah, in this moment in time, you could be doing the right thing, someone else is doing the wrong thing, you can't join in doing what the wrong thing is because it's easier in the moment. You have to do the right thing. And no, you may not benefit from that in the moment, 
but in the future, you absolutely will. Like that's what kind of karma has been taught about. But karma in the Hindu-based philosophy as well, in Hinduism, is pleasure. It's love. It's the physiology, the physical enjoyment of the body and desire. And so oftentimes we're taught like desire is bad, right? Pleasure is bad, all these things. But it's, it's absolutely not true. It's when these things are done in immoral ways that they are then evil or bad, however you want to look at it. But the second level is experiencing the pleasure of the five senses. Ayurveda is huge on the senses of the body. They're, they're always talking about the sense of the body, the, even the doshas. The doshas are literally built out of the different elements of the world, and they talk about the, you know, the different tastes. And so I'm not going to get into that today. But you have to understand is that this makes sense to come as level two, in my opinion. And that's because you can enjoy the pleasures of life. And again, it's difficult for 99 plus percent of people. And I'm part of that, right? So if you don't have any prosperity, you can't travel and see the world. You can't understand and visit other cultures. You can't take a vacation with your family. You can't send your kids to a school that you want to. You can't follow your overall curiosities in life because this world that we live in, and even back thousands of years ago, whether you're bartering, trading, et cetera, it costs. There's a cost to these material things. Again, you cannot want to worry about increasing prosperity, but if you're someone that likes to travel, it's just more challenging, right? You just you need to be able to have some level so that you get to experience this second level, which is karma. So first, we have some level of economic prosperity, whatever works for you kind of based on karma, based on what are your desires. If you have desires that are more extravagant or expensive, well, then you might need more arta to fulfill karma. The third level is dharma. Dharma I've talked about in the past because I'm a big believer. <laughs> there's, that, there's that Boston accent coming out right there, the Medford accent actually. Uh, but there's I'm a big believer in dharma. Now, Dharma, how I've always looked at it, is essentially life's purpose, right? Or, or your, your, your duty here. But there are other ways to look at Dharma as well in Hinduism. And it's righteousness, moral values, and again, as I said, your duty. I like to look at it as everyone is here for a reason. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. Now, did I believe that when I was in my teens and probably even early 20s? No, I didn't at all. I, I mean, I, when you're going through a lot of challenges and you have your hardships, you're not thinking like that. And I totally get it. So if you're in a rough spot right now, I understand. But just do understand on your end that in two, like in time, that too will pass. And when it does pass, you'll be able to hopefully look back and say, I get it. I understand the lessons that I was being taught. And for me, it took a long time to learn those lessons. But when I did, I got it. And because of that, then it led to my Dharma. So I didn't really have a Dharma. I didn't really have a purpose until my late twenties, early thirties. And then I, I felt like I did. And so because of that though, I was able to improve my level one Arta, my level two, saying, wow, now I'm able to begin a family, start a family. I'm in a better spot right now. But also, I am able to serve to a greater degree. So I have obligations to my family. That's duty and service. But I also now had obligations to a large team that I was running and a, a larger community in Boston where we were the largest Functional Medicine Integrative Health Center. And I looked at all of that as a lot of responsibility, but responsibility that I relished, cherished, was very grateful for, even though there was stress with it, no doubt about it, with starting a family, with uh, clinics, with all that, that, that comes along with it, the team, but at the same time, purpose. So when you have your purpose, it doesn't mean that life's easy. It doesn't mean that every day is even like an easy, happy, rainbow, sunshine, unicorn type of day. But what it does mean is that you have purpose. And sometimes having purpose brings on its own challenges because you're called to serve in some way. So the being called to serve is part of Dharma. 
and it's an obligation. And we have good days, we have bad days, but overall, life is that much greater when we know and we are performing a moral, moral duty, a moral service. The last level, which is called mokshu, is actually liberation, self-realization, and enlightenment. So this is the ultimate goal of human life. And I can't say that I've arrived here. I think I've had moments. I've had moments of it. So I, I have a, a taste of what it may be like, but certainly I have not arrived there. And this is the liberation from all desires. So you go back now to the want for arta, for prosperity, the want for karma, for pleasures and desires, the want even for dharma, for what is your place in this world? What's your duty? What's the service? What's the uniqueness? What do you bring to this world? And level four, when you reach, when you reach mokshu, what is it? Well, now it's really about complete self-fulfillment, self-love, no outside needs, the liberation of all desires. And it's an interesting place to even strive for because in this Western-based world, in our Western-based mindset, it's like, well, what does that even mean? If that's the ultimate goal, what does it mean then to, how do you, how do you view your family? How do you view your work? How do you view your passions and hobbies? How do you view, how do you view your loved ones? Like, how do you, do you have desires for them, right? I want my children to always be safe and always be healthy. And I wish that, of course, for my family and for everyone on this show. Like, it's, there's a lot to it. But you're somehow, you've learned to let go of all of that and just be. So, I don't know that we all reach level four. I really don't. I don't even know if that everyone is here to, to reach that last level, but maybe they are. And what I can say is there have been times in my life where I feel Everything is good. Like it has been done. My life is fulfilled. I, I do have moments of that where I say, this is enough. I have enough. I don't need any more. I am fulfilled. I'm happy. That's it. There's no more desire. And then the next day, you know, may appear and I say, well, I still haven't reached this or I still haven't strived for this or I still want to do this or I want this for this individual or like it's all these different, again, desires. And some of it is true, like true service that I want to provide. There's still more that I want to do. And so maybe there is a time, and I, again, even in Hinduism and Ayurveda, it's typically not part of the overall uh, first, the first phase of our life. Uh, this is an old podcast I did in Ayurveda, is the Kapha phase. We have the Pitta phase, and then we have the Vata base phase. And I think as we're moving maybe towards our you know, who knows? It's based on lifespan as well. Maybe as we move towards our mid-70s, later 70s and beyond, we're maybe reaching this stage of level four. And for some, of course, it can come much earlier. But I would love to hear your experience. I would love to hear if you've ever experienced at least glimpse, glimpse of, of mokshu, of level four. And what did it feel like? You know, where, how long has it stayed for? You know, I've been in meditation retreats. I've diff done different things like that where you kind of, you feel that sense. You feel a sense of overall connectedness that you don't feel for you anymore because you are simply one with the entire world. So what I wanted to do was share with you though, where we strive for as humans. And that why it's not always bad to have an interest in prosperity, which can lead to taking your enjoyment of this world to the next level and also your ability to provide for your family and community and extended family. And then also being able to then maybe explore more of what your true dharma is, your, your moral duty, your service that you are here to provide. And then if we're all fortunate enough, we get to move towards level four of Mokshu. So hopefully this was helpful. What I'll do is I will leave all of the takeaways today at stephencabral.com slash 3174. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Look forward to being back tomorrow on a brand new Cabral concept. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.